Hi everybody, this is Peter Schiff. It is Saturday, January 14th, 2012. Yesterday, Standard & Poor's came out and downgraded nine European nations. This is only adding anxiety to the problems that are plaguing Europe and the concern over sovereign debt. Uh, the results sent money pouring into the U.S. dollar. The euro hit a 16-month low. The dollar index traded its highest level since September 2010 with weakness in the euro uh, spilling over into other currencies. U.S. Treasury bond prices continue to rally. The U.S. government is once again able to borrow for 10 years below a 2% and for 30 years below 3%. Of course, the irony of all this is that investors are so concerned about European debt that they are buying up U.S. debt as a safe haven, despite the fact that the United States is in more debt than Europe and we have less of a capacity to repay than Europe. Those are the facts. You know, even though S&P downgraded all these European countries, you still have uh, two countries in Europe that have higher, or three countries rather, that have higher credit ratings than the U.S. Germany, of course, but also Luxembourg, uh, excuse me, no, uh, Finland and the Netherlands are also AAA rated. Uh, France and Austria had their rating cut to AA+, plus, which is the same rating assigned to the United States. So you have six nations in Europe who have credit ratings equal to or superior to the credit rating of the United States. But of course, if you look at the fundamentals, the fundamentals don't justify a U.S. rating uh, equal to even France or Austria. If you look at the reality, there's only two countries in all of Europe that have higher debt-to-GDP ratios than the U.S., and that's Italy and Greece. There's another couple of countries, Ireland and Portugal, that are about the same as the U.S. with a debt-to-GDP that is slightly, slightly greater than 100% of GDP. But the reality is our numbers are really only telling part of the story. You're looking at the debt where we have actually borrowed money, where the federal government has sold a treasury bond. And that's what they're measuring. We're not looking at a lot of other debt, a lot of other obligations of the federal government. A lot of the debt is off budget and not counted in those official numbers. For example, the six trillion or so of Fannie and Freddie debt that the U.S. government has guaranteed, or over one trillion dollars in student loans that the U.S. government has guaranteed. We are still obligated to repay those loans based on defaults, and we know there's going to be a lot of defaults in student loans. And in fact, a lot of the loans are being forgiven. We know there's going to be a lot of defaults in the mortgages, so the U.S. government is on the hook uh, to repay a good chunk of this debt, yet none of it is counted as part of the official uh, national debt or debt to GDP numbers. And in many cases, guaranteeing debt is worse for the U.S. taxpayer than actually borrowing the money. Because remember, when the Treasury borrows money, it gets the money. It spends it on something. Now, granted, it wastes it, but at least the government gets the use of the money that it borrows. But when it guarantees a mortgage, the government gets nothing. The money goes to the home buyer, who then gives it to the seller of the house, but no money goes into the U.S. Treasury, just an obligation to pay if the borrower defaults. Now, sure, there is some real estate to collateralize the loan, but if these loans go into default and we have to go to foreclosure, we'd probably be lucky to recoup 50 cents on the dollar, which means the other 50 cents has to be paid by the U.S. taxpayer. So if you throw that on to the official statistics, I think America looks a lot closer to Italy already, maybe even beyond Italy, uh, you know, gaining on Greece. But then what about all the contingent liabilities? What about the um, Social Security obligations. What about Medicare? All these unfunded obligations aren't even there. I mean, they're the real debt. This 15 or $16 trillion in funded debt with treasuries, this is the tip of a huge iceberg. If you look at all of the obligations that the federal government is committed to, we look a lot more like Greece even than Italy, maybe even worse. And I haven't even mentioned the, op the, the states. Remember, it's not just the federal government that has put U.S. taxpayers on the hook. It's the states. And everybody is going off the same tax base. 
right? The states and the federal government are all taxing the same American taxpayer to repay the debts. You don't have that in Europe. All the debt really is located at the national level. They don't have uh, the, the state problem that we do. When you add another three trillion or so, which is what the states have obligated Americans to repay, uh, the picture is clear. We are in more debt uh, than, than Europe. And if you actually look at the interest rates, France right now, France has the same credit rating as the United States, yet they're paying 50% more than the United States to borrow for 10 years. Other countries, take a look at Spain. Spain has a debt to GDP ratio much lower than the US right now. Their credit rating is a little lower, but they're in better fiscal shape, yet their, their 10 year yields are better than 5%. Italy's are better than six, I think six and a half percent or something like that for Italy. They've been as high as seven recently. Italy has a little bit larger debt to GDP, but that's only officially. Unofficially, I think we're in worse shape than Italy, yet Italy is paying more than three times as much to borrow as the United States. Now, here's the reality. Right now, everybody is buying the dollar as a safe haven. As a result, we have very low interest rates. And the American government and the American consumer can borrow very cheaply and go out and spend money. And that creates the illusion that our economy is in better shape than European economies. But it's only in better shape, and again, only if you think that spending borrowed money counts as being in good shape. But it's only in better shape because people are worried about the problems in Europe and sending money to the United States, keeping our interest rates down. If interest rates in Europe were still as low as they are in America, in Spain or in Italy or in Greece, there wouldn't be a problem. Conversely, think about the U.S. economy. What if the U.S. government had to pay the same amount of money to borrow as Spain or Italy? What do you think the U.S. economy would look like? I would argue that if interest rates in America today were as high as they are in Spain or, or Italy, our economy would be imploding. We would be in much worse shape than either of those two countries because we have less capacity to service our debt at those higher rates of interest. So the only reason that we haven't had a problem yet is because the world hasn't marked down our bonds. They haven't imposed a penalty. Interest rates haven't risen yet. But it's going to happen eventually. It, it, look, rates had a rise in Europe before the debt became a problem. We've got more debt, and when our interest rates rise, the debt is going to be just as much of a problem. And they're going to rise. Look, what, it, what happened this week? President Obama just sent a request to Congress to raise the debt ceiling by another $1.2 trillion. Now, this is supposed to get us through the end of the year. That's it. And then they've got to raise it again. Now, they're hoping they don't have to raise it until after the election. I have a feeling that they might have to raise it again before the election. You know, what other economic data came out today? We got the trade deficit for November. It jumped by about 10% to just under $48 billion. That's a seven-month high uh, for the U.S. trade deficit. I remember once upon a time when people actually were concerned about the trade deficits in America, and they were much, much smaller uh, than they were today. A trade deficit that was much higher than anticipated would have sent the dollar tumbling. Instead, the dollar rose sharply on Friday despite these horrific trade numbers. And what do these trade numbers show? They show that the U.S. economy is getting weaker. Right? You measure the strength of economy not based on how much people can spend buying stuff, but on what they produce. And the trade deficit shows that we're not producing enough. We're importing what everybody else produces, and we're borrowing money to pay for it. In fact, we're running trade deficits with Europe. We're borrowing money from Europe to buy European products. We're borrowing money from Asia to buy Asian products. Yet people are rushing into our debt as if America is more solvent than the nations that are lending us money. This is all not true. This is just a, a perception that is completely devoid from reality. Just like you had a NASDAQ bubble that was devoid from reality, or you had a real estate bubble. All of these bubbles burst. And right now we have a bubble in the U.S. Treasury market, in the U.S. dollar, in the U.S. government. It is an idea or an attitude that we're solvent when we're not. That somehow we're in better shape uh, than Europe when the reality is we're in worse shape. It's not that everything is great in Europe. It's not. There are a lot of problems there. But it's worse here. And the only reason that it appears that it's not worse is because we're able to borrow so much money for cheap. But again, how long can we do this 
the maturity on the national debt is extremely short. We are not locking in these record low rates. We are extremely vulnerable to rising interest rates. And if interest rates were to rise to the levels of Europe right now, not Germany, but countries like Italy or, 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 um, or Spain, I think the, the housing market would implode. Most of the banks that were bailed out would fail again. The budget deficit would explode out of control with a higher cost of funding. Unemployment would jump up. I mean, it would be a complete disaster. But that is going to happen eventually. And you're know, getting back to the trade deficit. You hear a lot of this spin by the Keynesians that, well, this growing trade deficit is a sign of economic strength. After all, our economy is growing more, so Americans are spending more. We're spending more than foreigners, and so we're sucking in all these imports because our economy is so strong. If our economy was so strong, we would not be sucking in ex imports. We would be flooding the world with exports. Our strong economy would, pr would be producing surpluses that we would be able to export to the world to earn money. The fact that we are borrowing from the world to consume is not a sign of the strength of our economy, but of the weakness. But of course, why would anybody in government be expected to recognize that? Also this week, they released the minutes for the, from the Federal Reserve's meetings back in 2006. And according to the minutes of these meetings, no one at the Fed had any clue uh, that there are any problems in the U.S. economy. Certainly the housing market, they were very sanguine. They were looking for maybe a soft landing at worst. No problem. The economy was in good shape. The fundamentals were strong. Of course, they were completely wrong. They couldn't see the housing problem, the financial crisis, even though it was right on their doorsteps. Now, what was I doing in 2006? I was finishing up my book, Crash Proof, How to Profit from the Coming Economic Collapse. I finished it by mid-2006. And of course, I was writing all sorts of articles in 2004, 2005 that I was publishing on my website that were all over the internet that I was sending to hundreds of reporters throughout the country pointing out all the problems that no one at the Fed could see. Now, here we are again. We are staring at an even greater economic, financial, currency crisis than the one that hit us in 2008. And the same people who said not to worry, no problem, back in 06, they couldn't see any problems looming on the horizon, are once again telling us everything is great, the U.S. economy is recovering. Um, they're wrong. And the same people, and I'm not the only one that was warning about the problems uh, back in 06 and earlier, and I'm not the only one warning about the problems that are coming. The difference is people like me who are warning about these problems and who got it right before are being completely ignored, whereas the people who are completely wrong are still in charge, and they're the ones that everybody is still listening to. And I guess because people are listening to them, uh, they're buying U.S. dollars and they're buying U.S. treasuries. But anybody who understands this isn't doing that. They're selling into the rally in the dollar. They're selling U.S. treasuries. They're buying gold. They're buying silver. They're even buying some of these other fiat currencies that are being sold down uh, as a result of the strength of the dollar. I mean, think about why is the Australian dollar falling? Why is the Canadian dollar falling? You know, there are other currencies where the governments are in much better fiscal shape than is the U.S., but their currencies are falling against the dollar, too, because as people are selling the euro and buying the dollar, they're selling all currencies and buying the dollar. Again, fundamentally, this doesn't make sense. The fundamentals argue to get rid of dollars and to get rid of treasuries. Anyway, we've got a holiday weekend coming up. The U.S. markets are closed in observance of Martin Luther King Day on Monday, but it promises to be a pretty volatile week in the wake of these Friday downgrades. And don't forget, if you want more frequent updates, listen regularly to The Peter Schiff Show on SchiffRadio.com. It's Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to noon Eastern Time. Thanks again, everybody.